Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid, and today's lesson is on idioms and sayings which are based on references to food and drink. Okay, so these are sayings uh, that um, are sort of metaphorical, meaning that they're, they're not literally true but they, um, they mean something in, in a different kind of context. So you'll see what I mean when we look at the examples, okay? So the first one is this, uh, which is actually true literally as well as metaphorically perhaps, but it's uh, there's no point crying over spilt milk. So if you spill, to spill, if you uh, drop the milk and it goes all over the floor, um, you, you've lost it. You can't use it. And milk is, well, milk costs money. Uh, it's inconvenient to lose some milk when you need it um, for your to put in your coffee or whatever. So um, if you spill some milk, uh, it's, um, you know, I, I if it happens to me, I feel annoyed and upset because I've wasted some milk, which I needed really. Um, and I, you have to then go out and buy some more. And it makes a mess, you have to clean it up. If you don't clean it up properly, um, it goes bad and it starts to smell. So there are all those things to think about. So, but then this saying is, there's no point crying over spilt milk. The idea is once it's spilt, you can't do anything about it. That's it, you just have to get on, clean it up, carry on, go and buy some more. Or, or do without it, don't bother getting any more, have your drink your tea without any milk in it, whatever it is. Um, so th this is what people say sometimes, uh, if someone's complaining and are, they're upset about something, um, people say that uh, just to say, well, th there's no point being upset about it, that doesn't achieve anything. You've just got to move on and be positive, carry on and, and don't just be negative all the time uh, saying, oh dear, oh dear, isn't this terrible? Uh, the, the main thing is to do something positive about it and not just cry, crying when you spill the milk. There's no point. Okay, that's that one. Then the next one. Um, if you say, that's not my cup of tea, or that's not really my cup of tea, um, it doesn't mean literally, that's not my cup of tea, that's somebody else's cup of tea. What it means is, that's not my taste. Okay. If somebody invites you to go to a film at the cinema, and maybe it's a horror film, and if you don't really like horror films, uh, you, you probably don't want to go. So you say, oh, that's a horror film, isn't it? Um, that's not really my cup of tea. Uh, I don't think so. Tell me when there's a different kind of film on and I, I might go to that with you. But horror film, no, not my cup of tea. So it's just a saying that we have it's not my cup of tea. It's not my taste. I don't enjoy that sort of thing. Okay, right. So next one, if someone is on the gravy train, if someone says, oh, she's on the gravy train, um, it may be that someone has got a job or maybe it's like a politician sometimes. They get the kind of job where they, they earn a lot of money uh, they have the opportunity to uh, go out for meals in restaurants quite a lot and it's all paid for on their, their work expenses and so on. 
So if you're on the gravy train, the gravy is the kind of sauce that you put on your food. In, in English cooking, it's a kind of brown sauce. It could have beef flavor in it or chicken flavor, but it's hot liquid, quite thick. It's a bit like a soup and you pour it on your meal on with if you have a meat and vegetable meal you can pour gravy onto it to give you a kind of sauce uh, to add to your food so it's the idea of sort of rich food and something nice to eat so if someone is on the gravy train it means they're they're in a position where that they can have a really nice time and lots of nice things to eat and and generally not have to worry about money um, and so on. So that's that one. Okay, next one. Um, he knows which side his bread is buttered. Okay, so if you think of a slice of bread, there's a slice of bread and if you put butter on your bread, you, I think you only put it on one side usually, don't you? If you put butter on both sides, uh, it would get very messy because you'd be putting the butter down onto the plate. It would stick to the plate. Uh, you know, not a good idea. So usually you put butter on one side of your bread there. Okay. So one side is buttered, has butter on it, and the other side is not buttered. So I think we all know if we have butter on our bread, we can see <laughs> which side is buttered. There's no difficulty there. But this is not literal. This is metaphorical. So if somebody knows which side his bread is buttered, um, that means he knows um, if he has a job um, in an organization, he knows who the important people are and he knows who the less important people are and he won't waste any time with the less important people. Um, he just wants to spend time with the more important people because they have more power and influence. So this is someone who is rather calculating, you could call it. If someone is calculating, they work out in an organization who, who is the best person to, to socialize with, for example, and who who some people I, I wouldn't waste my time with because they, they don't have any power in the organization. Uh, it's not a very nice attitude, but there are people like that. So that kind of person who is calculating about who who they're nice to and who they don't have time for um, they are the people who know which side their bread is buttered. They know who to, um, you know, who to talk to, uh, who to spend time with for their advantage. Okay, right. So, and then another bread and butter one, but this is quite different. If you say, this job is my bread and butter, it means this job is um, what I rely on for my money. Um, my food, bread and butter, is sort of basic food. Well, bread is basic food. Butter is a bit of a luxury. But I suppose it's meant to be, mean that. Bread is the basic stuff. Butter is a bit more luxury. If you have a bit of extra money, you will buy some butter. Um, so you, you have your job to earn your money, to buy your food and all your needs. It's to do with survival. So survival. 
having having enough money to live on. So if you have a job which gives you money to live on to survive, so that's what people say, this job is my bread and butter, I need it. Okay. Okay, so now we've had the bread and the butter. <laughs> now we've got the jam. <laughs> so if if someone says like with with a question mark and an exclama exclamation mark as well, it looks rather extreme. But this is said in a sort of sarcastic way. Okay. So if someone is asking for something and you, you give them what they want and then they want something more and you give them that and then they still want more. It's as if they're never satisfied. Some people are never satisfied and they, you give them one thing and they want another. Um, sometimes that's good. It depends whether it's convenient for you or not. But um, you can say sarcastically to someone like that, do you want jam on it or do you want jam on it too? You know, meaning, uh, you know, how, how much more are you going to want? It's enough to have bread and butter without adding jam as well. Jam is sort of um, a lot extra, you know. So do you want jam on it or do you want jam on it too? Uh, in said in a sarcastic way, or you or someone might say you you want jam on it too, don't you? You want jam on it too. Um, you're the sort of person who always wants more. Okay, so that's that one. Um, and then finally, for this first half of the lesson, um, if if they're cherry picking examples to support their argument. If people are cherry picking uh, examples, uh, if they're trying to um, argue about maybe um, climate change or something to do with uh, finance, banking, um, any, any big sort of political issue really, people have to use examples to support their argument. But the idea is they should really uh, find a lot of different examples to get a, a, a wide picture of the situation. But sometimes people find an example which doesn't fit their argument. It doesn't fit. And it doesn't support their argument. So what do they do sometimes? They decide, I'm not going to use that example because it doesn't help. It might go the opposite way. So, but then they find all the examples they can to support their argument. But if they find a few that don't support it, they will leave those out, not mention them at all. Uh, so that's called cherry picking because cherries are these little red, uh, fruits that that grow on trees, uh, cherries. So cherry picking is just taking a small piece of fruit um, like that. So it's it's selective. It's being selective. So um, if you want to give a balanced view of something, you might find examples from both sides to show, you know, for and against climate change, for example. But if someone wants to really prove their point, they're going to leave out the examples that don't fit that. Okay, so that's the first half of our lesson and let's move on now to the second part. Okay, so let's look at the second set of seven idioms. So first of all, we have this one. She wants her share of the cake. Okay, and it's similar to the second one. He wants his slice of the pie. So in both of these, if you think of a circular 
cake or pie um, and usually you you cut you cut it up into pieces like that and you share it you share it among some people different people and you you have a slice that's a slice a section of the pie or the cake so this is about people wanting wanting their part of something so it can be literal it could be literally true there is a cake there or there is a pie and everybody wants to have a piece of it okay which is fine um, but um, also it can be used metaphorically just to mean that somebody wants part of something that's going on or they want to benefit in some way from something they don't want to be left out the idea of being left out if everybody else is having a piece of pie or cake or um, they're taking part in a, a meeting or something at work um, people feel that they should be involved not be left out they think well why are those people in there having a meeting and not me why not me so this is when people feel left out and they want to make sure that they they get their share as well okay uh, next one if you say someone was as nice as pie um, it's not the same as the having a share or a slice if someone is as nice as pie um, well pie is nice I think most people like to eat a piece of pie it's nice something with a nice pastry on it and with nice fruit inside or meat or something pie is nice to eat I think most people like it so if someone is as nice as pie it means that they're nice um, pleasant um, polite and so on um, it may be that you were expecting the person not to be nice um, especially if maybe you're uh, having to apologize to somebody for something and and you think that they're going to be angry about something um, and then when you do go to talk to them and say oh I'm sorry about something and they're really nice about it and it's unexpected you think they might tell you you know how annoyed they are or something or they might be a bit unfriendly but if they're really nice about it you can say oh it was all okay she was as nice as pie about it okay so it can be in a situation where you were not expecting the person to be nice but then they were okay so then moving on to uh, apples so if there's one rotten apple in the barrel okay so the barrel is a, a container like that it's often made of wood with sort of metal strips holding it like that and you might put apples in it to store them um, so you have a barrel full of apples uh, but if one of them is rotten rotten you can pronounce that either with the T sound or without by the way you could say rotten rotten or rotten rotten um, I think both are correct so if you, if you have an apple um, there's the apple there um, and it's a nice red apple and it might have a bit of a bit of green on it which is fine as well um, but if you have a bit of 
black there and it's gone soft um, and it's brown really, more brown than black, except I don't have a brown marker here, so I'm having to improvise with black. <laughs> um, that was my fault for not getting a brown marker. Um, so if there's a black bit or a brown bit on, on an apple and it's soft um, and you think, oh dear, that's gone a bit, that's a bit old, that apple, you might cut that piece off and eat the rest or you may not feel like eating any of it because of the black bit. So that is rotten. If the food has gone bad, it's rotten. Okay, but the problem is if you have one apple like that in a barrel down here and it's got the black bit on it like that and then you've got lots of other apples in the barrel which are okay, um, they're not going to stay okay for long because the rotten bit, the bad bit, has bacteria in it and that will spread, it will spread right through the barrel if, if you don't notice and take the bad apple out it will affect all the others. So this is the literal meaning of course but um, it can apply metaphorically to um, well a group of people perhaps um, nice people but there's one person who's not so nice and uh, sometimes if that person is not so nice they can influence the other people to, to, to be a bit like them so it can spread to, to other people if you don't um, stop seeing that person or whatever it is. Um, so there's one rotten apple in the barrel. In a company, for example, there may be one person who's a bit uh, problematic, a, a bit of a problem. Um, and you, you could say it for that, uh, that marvellous people, but there's just one person who's not so, uh, not so positive, perhaps, um, who might affect other people eventually if they stay there. Okay, that's that one. And then um, this one, there's something fishy going on. Fish, you know, uh, fish, um, fish, that's a fish. Um, so fishy, well, fish smell. So this, this is to do with the smell of fish, because if there's some fish around, you can usually smell it, you notice it. So when this is used, well, this is used metaphorically to say something, there's something going on, uh, there's a strange atmosphere, that's the smell of the fish. There's a strange atmosphere, people are planning something and you don't know what it is. Um, it may be just that it's your birthday soon and they're planning a surprise party. I mean, that's great. But something fishy, it makes you suspicious. So, um, suspicious. And you think, what's going on? You know, something fishy. That's something a bit unusual, a bit strange. It's not the normal atmosphere. Okay. Right, next one. So, one man's meat is another man's poison. That's the traditional phrase. Uh, to make it equal, it's sometimes people say one person's meat is another person's poison to uh, avoid um, gender bias. Okay. Um, so, if one person likes meat, but another person, that meat to them is like poison, something really bad that makes them ill. So, this is just um, something to do with taste again. 
It's like when I, we had earlier, not my cup of tea. So this is a similar one to that. That's not my cup of tea. So one man's meat, which is that that person really enjoys and it's good for them, makes them strong and healthy, is another man's poison. That person may be allergic to it or they just don't like the taste or anything, but it can apply in any, um, in any context. So you might say again with the, the horror film invitation, some people love horror films and then other people don't like them. So you can apply it to that. I'm not going to the horror film because I don't like them. My friend loves them. So that just shows one person's meat is, is another person's poison. So it fits that kind of context. Okay, and then finally, um, I hope you don't do this to me because if you take what someone says with a pinch of salt, it means you don't believe what they tell you. Um, I always try to speak the truth and to give you as much information as, as I can, accurate. Uh, but if you, um, if you take what someone says with a pinch of salt, so this is a pinch, when you put your fingers together. So if you take a little bit of salt, uh, the grains of salt uh, with your fingers, that's a pinch of salt. People do that when they want to put a little bit of salt on their food. They might pick it out of a dish and then do that with their fingers and sprinkle it over their food. So that's a pinch of salt. Um, but that has come to mean not believing uh, what somebody tells you. Um, so I take what he says with a pinch of salt. If that person has told you something in the past and you believed him, and then you find out that it wasn't true, uh, or it wasn't entirely true, then you're a little bit more careful next time he tells you something and you don't feel like believing him. So you're taking what he says with a pinch of salt. Okay. Right, so those are our 14 idioms using food and drink as a, as a metaphor. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. Maybe it's taught you some new vocabulary as well. So if you'd like to go to the website, ingvid.com, there's a quiz there on this topic. And uh, thanks for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now.